Okay, everyone. So now we are learning the execution process of .NET application. Here we use the block diagram. With the help of that, we will see how the .NET application execute. So first of all, let's say we are having a .NET application here. Let's say I am using some language, and in that I am using some web form. And here we are having, let's say, some username. And here we are having some button. So here we have developed some GUI application. And also behind that, we have done some coding. So this is the code which we have written. So now this whole thing is called the source code. We know that who write the source code. We know it is the user who write the source code. Let's say I am using any of the programming language. Maybe it is VB.NET or maybe it is C Sharp.NET. So here with the help of these languages, we can write the code and this is called the source code. So first of all, this code is created. In the .NET, we are having the two-step compilation. So first of all, if I am using any of the language, their respective compiler comes in. If I am using the VB.NET, so there will be the VB compiler. If I am using the C Sharp.NET, then C Sharp compiler. So different, different compilers in the .NET are available. And this compiler is going to convert the source code into the intermediate language. This intermediate language can be called as IL or the MSIL. IL means intermediate language. MSIL means Microsoft intermediate language. So the compiler convert the source code into the intermediate language. So this whole part is called the first step of the compilation. So we can say that from source code to intermediate language, this is the first compilation. There are various other names of this intermediate language, just like IL, MSIL, or maybe common intermediate language that is CIL, or this is also called the managed code. Whenever we are converting the source code to the intermediate language, and we know that intermediate language is very much secure that nobody can understand. So this intermediate language conversion is called the managed code. There is another concept of the unmanaged code. Whenever we are converting the source code directly to the machine code so that it works directly on the machine in the one step of the compilation, just like our C language or the VB language. So that is called unmanaged code. But here in the .NET, it work on the managed code. So now we are understanding this process with the help of the client server machine. Let's say this was the machine where the user work. Now this is the server. Now at the server, user created a code. Now this source code which is created is now first converted to the intermediate language. Now from the server side, we are sending this intermediate language to the client. Now here on the other side, let's say we are having the client. Now, when we are sending this intermediate language, this intermediate language is very much secure that nobody can hack in between and nobody can even understand. Let's say there is some person available there in between and it can read this IL, but it cannot understand it. So now on the client side, this IL we have. Now what client will be doing? Client should be having the class loader so that this IL can be loaded on the client machine. So now at the client side, this intermediate language is loaded. That means this IL is loaded by the class loader. Now you understand that if I give you some language to load and you just double click on that. So loading goes on means let's say if I'm giving you a project, you are double clicking on that project very first file you are clicking. Now that opens on your system. So whenever it open, it loads and which is done by the class loader. So this process is taken by the class loader. Now you understand one more thing. In your project, you have used various functions. Let's say various projects we are having, let's say various variables or maybe some just like printf and scanf we are having where console applications or the windows application so their header files are also required and the dotnet those header files are called the libraries means when your project is loading into the environment the libraries are also required so class loader take the help of 
libraries so class loader take these libraries so that this intermediate language can be loaded on the system so on the client now this system is working now what client do client just click on run the project when you run the project again there is another step of compilation goes on and that is called the jit compilation so this is done by the just in time compiler so the next step here is the jit compiler just in time compiler is very fast and it convert immediately the intermediate language to the machine code or the native code so that means this jit compiler takes the code which was loaded by the class loader with the help of the library and it is converting that to the native code and we know that native code is the machine code which run on the operating system so here this native code is working on the os or the machine so you can see that from the user side to operating system this whole thing done with the help of the dotnet and this managed code conversion that means from il to the native code this is called the second compilation so now if you see we can see that at the client side this intermediate language is first loaded with the help of class loader and the libraries then just in time compiler convert it to the native code or the machine code and that it run on the client and yes this intermediate language which we are sending through the network is very much secure so that is the whole execution process and if we see there are different different components just like first of all we are having the source code source code is the code which is taken by the user which user write so if i am creating some application that will be the source code then afterward language compiler so these compiler convert the source code to the intermediate language intermediate language can be called as il msil cil or the managed code now this is secure you can send to the third party you can send to the network you can provide from the pen drive totally secure nobody can steal your code now this intermediate code is then again sent to the let's say client now client is having the class loader so it loads the intermediate language with the help of the library so this code is loaded in your environment whenever you double click on the code the code loads so that is the same process class loader do it now the client press the run project now again jit compiler come into picture it convert to the native code and this native machine code work on your system so there are the two steps here of the compilation the source code is first converted to the intermediate language this is the first compilation intermediate language is then converted to the native code or the machine code this is the second step of compilation this is how the execution process of dotnet application goes on